Hello, I'm John Hefner, and I'm going to read one of my picture books to you, my latest picture book, called Two Tales of Brothers from Ancient Mesopotamia. This book contains two stories. I'm going to read one today, the other one in a later session. The interesting thing I think about these stories is that they are so ancient. They were written four and a half thousand years ago. And they were written not as we normally think writing to be, but on clay tablets. Okay, I'm going to read the first story. Oh, sorry, I should say that they were illustrated by Kate Durack. They're about a king called Gilgamesh and his brother Enkidu. Incredible warriors. Okay, here's the first story. The King and the Wild Man. Long ago, in the swirling mists of time, there lived a mighty king by the name of Gilgamesh. He ruled from the magnificent strong-walled city of Uruk, and there was none braver, none more fierce or frightening, for this king had been created by the gods themselves. He was said to be two parts god and one part human. At first the people of Uruk thanked the gods for their king and bowed low as he ride, rode by in his chariot of gold. But all that power made Gilgamesh a monster. He became unspeakably cruel, treating his people as slaves. Their whole world was turned upside down. Everything is mine, he told them, even your lives, and I will do with them as I wish. It was then that the people of Uruk cried out to their gods, Rid us of this king before he destroys us all! There he is in his chariot of gold. And there are the people of Uruk, calling to the gods for help. The gods heard the cries and decided to teach Gilgamesh a lesson he would never forget. We will create another as fierce as him, they declared, but different, one who shines as bright as him, the sun god said, but with a different light. One of equal power, the storm god thundered, but of, but of a kind this king will not understand. And so the goddess Aruru took a pinch of clay, whispered life into it, and created a man-god to rival Gilgamesh. They called him Enkidu. Although equal to Gilgamesh in power, strength and courage, Enkidu was completely different in other ways. His skin was not smooth and perfumed with oils, but rough and covered in fur. His hair was tangled and matted, not neatly groomed like the king's, and he lived under the stars, grazing with animals, drinking at waterholes and wandering in the wilderness. He was the wildest of wild men. There he is. And there are the gods, discussing what to do. News of Ankadu spread, soon reaching the city of Uruk. My equal! <laughs> Impossible! Gilgamesh roared with laughter. Bring this wild man to me, he ordered, sending out his army. But Enkidu was too wily for the king's soldiers, easily hiding from them among the wild animals, and even when they did track him down, he was too strong for them. So Gilgamesh thought again. Very well. If I cannot force this Ankadu to attend me, I will trick him into it. And so a beautiful woman called Shamhat was sent into the wilderness. Ankadu was soon smitten by her beauty. For seven days and nights she worked on his wildness, softening it until he was no longer the same man. After she had finished, the animals fled from Ankadu when he moved among them. This worried the wild man. Hmm. 
What am I to do? he asked. Where am I to live now that I'm no longer welcome among the wild ones? Shamhat smiled and stroked him gently. Come with me to the strong-walled Uruk. Enkidu agreed, and they set off at once. There they are, heading off. Meanwhile, Gilgamesh had a dream that troubled him deeply. He dreamt that a bright star, almost too brilliant to look at, had fallen from the heavens, landing outside the city walls. He tried to lift the star, but it was too heavy. And yet he was unable to leave it alone, drawn to it with a strange attraction. What does it mean? he asked. But neither wise men nor priests could tell him. In the end, it was his mother, Ninsun, who explained the dream. That star is your brother, she said. One who has been born from the heavens like you, made of the gods like you, one who shines as brightly as you. He will be your companion and never let you down. Together, you too will fight against evil. But where is this brother? The king asked. What will he look like? How will I know him? The king's mother simply smiled. You will know when the time comes. The gods will make it so. Next morning... Gilgamesh was woken by trumpets and rums. The streets of Uruk were packed with people laughing and cheering. The wild man is here at last, they shouted. He will rid us of this cruel king. Gilgamesh saw the giant figure of Enkidu striding up the tree-lined avenue towards him. At once the king leapt from the palace ramparts and landed in the wild man's path. Bow down before me, he bellowed. I am your overlord. Enkidu narrowed his eyes and sneered. Out of my way, he hissed. No one is my overlord. That day, the city of Ur that day, the city of Uruk shook and trembled as if gripped by an earthquake. The two warriors fought like crazed bulls, landing blows on each other that would have crushed the strongest of men. Trees were trampled, columns toppled, and buildings shattered as they raged back and forth. The people of Uruk screamed and scrambled out of the way, hiding wherever they could, their hearts filled with fear. The man-gods fought all day and right through the night, neither gaining the upper hand. Only as dawn began to break did Enkidu stumble backwards, exhausted, and for a moment let his guard down. Gilgamesh was exhausted too, but he leapt forward, landing a blow that knocked Enkidu to his knees. Enough! Enough! the wild man cried. You are the strongest! Gilgamesh swung back, to strike a Gilgamesh swung back to strike a blow that would have finished off Enkidu. But then the sun's rays lit up the wild man's face so that it glowed with the brilliance of a star. The king gasped, shielding his eyes. You? You? You are the one! The bright star come to light my way! You are the companion who will never forsake me. He leaned down to Enkidu. My brother. Gilgamesh gave Enkidu his hand and pulled him to his feet. The warriors embraced, their faces streaming with tears as the people of Uruk crept out of hiding. How wrong I have been, 
Gilgamesh cried. So cruel and evil that I I almost killed you, my, my own brother. But all that will change now. From this moment forth, you and I will join together and we will fight against evil wherever it may be. The people of Uruk cheered loudly. They celebrated right through the night, all the way to the dawn. Okay, that's the end of the first story. Thanks so much.